Now with this background, I am going to talk about the matrix presentation, very important, of tau, the stress. And this lengthy equation, tau equal to sum i 1 to 3 j 1 to 3 tau i j i a j equal to such a long expression can be written in this way tau and then e1, e2, e3, then tau 1, 1, tau 1, 2, tau 1, 3, tau 2, 1, tau 2, 2, tau 2, 3, tau 3, 1, tau 3, 2, tau 3, 3, e1, e2, e3. And once you do a matrix multiplication, you will get back to this form. I repeat, this plus will not mean simple addition of the tau ij units, tau 3, 1 and tau 2, 3 cannot be added up arithmetically. So here is the matrix notation. Now once it is being stated, it is also true that when we are representing the stress on acting on a cube, we will not always write these things. In fact, this is well understood e1, e2, e3 and e1, e2, e3. So basically, we write only what is given within the third bracket tau is equal to so much and we call this as the stress matrix. The way I am talking about stress, if I am talking about strain, then finally this will be called as a strain matrix. Any second rank tensor, let us say hydraulic conductivity in the geohydrology will be called as hydraulic conductivity matrix, even permeability matrix, these terms will come. We will also see the Young's modulus presented as a matrix in due courses we will see. So only this part will be useful and in fact, if you open any structural geology textbook, you will straightway find that they are writing. tau is equal to this, but I hope I have explained these things here. Now, the way I have done it, in some book the notations vary. They write instead of tau 1 1, sigma 1 1 and in place of tau 2 2, they write sigma 2 2 and in place of tau 3 3, they write sigma 3 3 because we are more accustomed to see if there is an inclined stress acting on a plane, the normal stress is called as sigma and the shear stress is called as tau. So all these normal stresses in some book you will find they are writing as sigma. There are other books where you will find they write everything with sigma, sigma 1 1, sigma 1 2, sigma 1 3, sigma 2 1, sigma 2 2, etc. The basic deduction remains the same and in some yet other books you will find they are writing instead of axis 1 they write as axis x, instead of axis 2 they write as axis y, instead of axis 3 they write as axis z and then change these notation, this suffix will change. How it will change? I can write a few tau is equal to tau 1 1 will be tau xx, tau 1 2 will be tau xy and then tau 1 3 will be tau xz. I would strongly request all the students who are attending this lecture to write tau 2 1, tau 2 2, tau 3 2, tau 2 3 and tau 3 1, tau 3 2 and tau 3 3 in terms of tau and xyz. It is important we must do one practice once. Otherwise, once you get a new book, new research paper, little bit confusion can happen. So please do it compulsorily. I have probably told you earlier whenever I am doing numericals, strongly requested that the students keep writing, stop the video when I am asking question, pause, once a while think about it, do by your own hand, just by watching it will not help. You must take simultaneous notes and its advantages in YouTube, you can stop and you can write which is not possible in case of actual lectures in the classroom. Okay, now we will be talking more about this stress matrix. So we know that these three elements 
are the normal stresses and rest of the elements are the shear stresses and this can be written as trace of the matrix tau is basically the sum tau i i i goes from 1 to 3 in other words this is equal to tau 1 1 plus tau 2 2 plus tau 3 3. So, the normal stress sum of normal stress is equal to the trace of this matrix always whatever be the symbols you are using this is going to happen. For example, here sum of the normal stresses and here of course that is the sum of the normal stresses. And whatever are outside are all the shear stresses. Okay. Now, let us look at a few special situations. Imagine in a cube tau ij equal to tau ji for i not equal to j, a specific case I am discussing. What this means in terms of symbol, it means tau 1 2 equal to tau 2 1 suppose and tau 3 1 equal to tau 1 3 and tau 2 3 equal to tau 3 2. In other words, these two are same, these two are same and these two are same in a geological deformation. In that case, we say that this cube will not rotate, no torque will be created. In such a situation and I will explain why, the cube does not rotate or no torque is created and it can be understood there is one way of proving it through the definition of moment and the detail available in the literature and second I can apply a common sense and I can explain why it happens. Let us look at the two components tau 1 3 and tau 3 1 we said if they are equal like tau 2 3 and tau 3 2 tau 1 3 and tau 3 1 etc are equal. Where is tau 1 3 in this diagram? Here is the tau 1 3. I can draw it again so that so you see this is tau 1 3 and here is the tau 3 1. Imagine no other stresses are acting on this cube, only two are acting tau 1 3 and tau 3 1 then it becomes easy to explain. The tendency of tau 1 3 will be to rotate the cube in this way if sufficient stress is acting and tau 3 1 will have a tendency to rotate in this way. Only if they are equal there is a chance that the cube will not rotate. So, they have to be the same. Similarly, what I did for tau 3 1 and tau 1 3 we can do for tau 2 3 and tau 3 2 and tau 1 3 2 3 1 2 tau 1 2 and tau 2 1. This is a crude explanation the detailed explanation is there in terms of moment defining moment and then the deduction. One of the very specific case where the cube will not rotate is that when tau i j is equal to 0. Let us write it for tau i j equal to 0 for i not equal to j. What happens then to the matrix? It looks like this tau 1 1 0 0 0 tau 2 2 0 0 0 tau 3 3. So, in this case what has happened? No shear stress acts on the surfaces of the cube. So, this is a configuration when the cube will not rotate. This is a known geological case to many of us. When we are doing the uniaxial, let us say the triaxial uh, deformations within the civil engineering or the engineering geological lab, we are applying stresses in three perpendicular directions. This is one example of triaxial stress regime. In case of biaxial stress regime, any one of them will be 0 and in case of a uniaxial stress regime, any two of them will be equal to 0. So, the stress matrix for the biaxial stress regime and the uniaxial stress regime I hope is understood. For example, I can write this as triaxial 
stress regime and tau 1 1 0 0 0 let us say I write this as tau 2 2 0 and 0 0 0 this is a case of biaxial stress regime. And sometimes we write it in a smaller version. I note that these elements are 0, these elements are also 0. So, from here sometimes we write in this way tau 1 1 0 0 tau 2 2 also indicates the same biaxial stress regime. If I write like this it automatically means these elements are equal to 0. Let us represent the biaxial stress regime in another case now. Tau 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 and 0 0 tau 3 3. This is a biaxial stress regime because we see that there are two normal stresses acting on the body, no shear stresses are applied. And in this case, all these elements are 0 and all these elements are 0. Can we present it in a shorter version? The shorter version will be in the matrix format tau 1 1 0 and 0 tau 3 3. Okay. So, I have demonstrated what happens if tau 3 3 is 0, how the shorter matrix can be written. If tau 2 2 is 0, how the shorter matrix can be written. Now, you can also do and you must do by your own take tau 1 1 equal to 0 and basically write this as a separate matrix that is a biaxial representation. When it is a uniaxial stress acting, in fact, there is no need to write the matrix. A uniaxial stress regime, but I, if I still write, I will demonstrate uniaxial normal stress regime tau 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0. So, instead of writing so much we can simply write as tau 1 1 in the matrix form that is why I have given the third bracket or even we can avoid the third bracket and write tau 1 1. Similarly, tau 2 2 and tau 3 3 can also be written for the uniaxial stress regime. Now, in this particular case T i j equal to 0 for i not equal to j, we will look at a special case and the case is when tau 1 1 equal to tau 2 2 equal to tau 3 3. That means, all these are of same magnitude. So, in that case I can write simplifying it tau 0 0. 0 tau 0 and 0 0 tau. Basically, tau 1 1, tau 2 2 and tau 3 3 are replaced by only tau. This is a well known situation what we call as the hydrostatic stress regime. This is also known as lithostatic stress regime. Remember, there are other definitions of hydrostatic and lithostatic possibly in the literature in rock mechanics. This word hydrostatic and lithostatic I am using as per structural geology textbook. It has been seen that from textbook to textbook the definition can vary. The definition of clay can be mineralogic or sedimentological. Even within structural geology the meaning of the word detachment can mean different things and from one subject to another hydrostatic and lithostatic can have different meaning in rock mechanics. Here I am talking essentially in terms of structural geology. And what is the best example to say note, note the word hydrostatic insert this cube within water or kerosene any fluid equal stress acts in all direction that is represented by such a stress matrix. Now, we can further get into the detail of it. We know that if a cube is dipped into a fluid and the height is h, say the cube is here, a small cube is dipped and this overburden height is h, then the pressure acting, normal stress acting on the 
this horizontal cube surface is given by tau is given by h rho g where rho is the density of the fluid g is the acceleration due to gravity so basically i can replace h rho g within the body i am taking this as h1 and i am writing this as h1 rho g so in that case this matrix becomes h1 rho g 0 0 0 h1 rho g 0 and 0 0 h1 rho g this is the tau replaced by that and this can also be written in this way if i take h1 rho g outside it becomes 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and this can also be stated in this way h1 rho g and i3 i3 means a 3 into 3 matrix where this diagonal all the elements are 1 and the rest of the elements are 0 so you are seeing how notation is varying and by the way it is not a difficult thing in fact it is easier than many of the structural geological problems now imagine the cube is dipped further deeper at h2 you see that h2 is more than h1 what will happen the tau value will change so in that case i can write so this was the tau we were doing we can call it tau 1 tau 2 becomes h2 rho g i3 the way we have done the tensors of rank 2 the tensors of rank 3 can also be defined there e i e j e k will be taken as a unit but it is not related to the stress related studies so therefore we will drop but i will encourage also to explore such tensors and their application in geoscience with geoscientific parameters can be represented as tensors of rank 3 in case of tensors of rank 2 we have seen that we have used e i e j as a unit dyad and in case of vectors it is e i only one taken at a time and in case of the scalars none of them are used so we say scalars as a zero rank tensors tau i represented in terms of a matrix and now that can also be stated instead of writing the entire matrix we can write simply tau ij or tau ij within the third bracket this this indicates this and also tau is equal to this sometimes this is equal to sign is not given tau space and then the third bracket is given now i talked about the unit matrix previously unit tensor better to call them unit tensor or the identity tensor in this case i3 will be 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 this can also be represented as summation i equal to 1 to 3 j equal to 1 to 3 delta ij is a kronecker delta then e i e j we need to understand how, how it works first i will open up j equal to 1 j equal to 2 and j equal to 3 so i start i equal to 1 2 3 then so it is delta i 1 i 1 then e i e 1 the next i will take j equal to 2 i equal to 1 2 3 delta i 2 e i e 2 plus then some i 1 2 3 delta i 3 j equal to 3 is taken e i e 3 next i am asking the viewers to expand further put i equal to 1 2 3 three terms will come out from here another three terms will come out and here another three altogether nine terms will come out then after the expansion apply the kronecker delta situation uh, thing that delta i j will be 1 if i is equal to j and it is 0 if i not equal to j once that is applied we will find that out of these three only one term will come out e1 e1 and here will come out e2 e2 and from here i will get e3 e3 so the final expression becomes e1 e1 plus e2 e2 and e3 e3 we said they are like the units so this is like 1 over here this gives 1 over here and e3 e3 will give 1 over here so in this way the unit tensor or the identity tensor is understood now let us understand how the principal stress will be represented in terms of the stress matrix 
Imagine on a cube there are three perpendicular stresses acting sigma 1, 2 and 3. They can be compressive or all of them can be extensional or some of them are compressive, some of them are extensional. In that case as we see no shear stresses are acting, it can be simply be represented as sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. The diagonal elements are non-zero and rest of the elements tau ij or sigma ij for i not equal to j all such terms become 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and since I am using the sigma symbol so I am writing equal to sigma as the principal stress being represented here sigma i that means sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 are the principal stresses so like tau 1 1 or we can write sigma 3 in or sigma 1 in this case we can also write sigma 1 1 there are different ways of writing the such uh, stresses in different books we will find now we are going to see the sum of the two second rank tensors it is not difficult sigma is a second rank tensor i equal to 1 to 3 j equal to 1 to 3 sigma ij ei ej so if it is expanded there will be nine terms and similarly there is another stress tau is equal to sum i1 to 3 summation goes j1 to 3 and tau ij eij there are nine terms how to add these two tensors and how physically it can be explained so let me first speak about the symbolic presentation sigma plus tau is equal to this summation we write as it is and here what we do sigma ij plus tau ij added up within bracket and then ei ej which is outside what it means let us try to understand say on a cube we have the different stresses acting shear stresses normal stresses etc and let us say this is our stress regime sigma now within the same coordinate system and on the same cube basically tau is also going to act and similarly for tau also basically on the same cube i am drawing the stresses that are acting shear stresses at two perpendicular directions on each of these faces and there is also a normal stress this symbol indicates that add the respective components. For example, these two will be added up. This shear and that shear will be added up. This shear and that shear will be added up. This normal stress on that face, on sigma 1 face and on this plane, this two will be added up. That is what it basically means. I have already stated that there are 9 components if we expand and there are also 9 components for a specific EI EJ add them up. For example, in this stress sigma if I am writing something and then plus sigma 1 2 E1 E2 plus etc. and here for the tau some expression plus tau 1 2 e1 e2 and that long expression basically this sigma 1 2 and this tau 1 2 are to be added up and that is what it means so the respective stress directions have to be simply been added up this is the meaning of this expression so if this is true for the addition it must be true for the subtraction so sum or subtraction or subtraction sigma plus tau sigma plus minus tau then I will put a minus symbol here in this way it will work now imagine this is compressive say 5 unit and it is compressive and here instead of being compressive the extensional and it is 5 unit what will happen these two units will be added up this is plus 5 and that is minus 5 plus 5 and minus 5 will give to 0. So, the normal stress on this particular phase will become 0. 
So in terms of matrix, how it will work, I am going to demonstrate. It is very simple. Sigma and tau, I am demonstrating in terms of matrix now. Basically, the corresponding elements will be added up. Say, sigma is 5, 2, 19. I am just writing random numbers, minus 3, 0, 7. And this is minus 2, minus 3, 18. And tau equal to 0, 2, 8, 4, 2, 9, 3, 3, 3. Then sigma plus tau will be, and I change the chalk, 5 plus 0 is equal to 5, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. In this way, you have to finish. I would request strongly the students, even this simple exercise you do by your hand, write down the numbers and just add up and create the new matrix. In this way, the sum of two second rank tensors can be done. What it physically means, there was a stress acting sigma on a cube. On the same cube, tau stress came into existence. And in that case, how much is the uh, resultant stress regime? Then that is the answer. When we are talking in terms of the sum, sigma plus tau. And in this formula, we have considered that Sigma and tau are basically coaxial tensors. Let me explain. Sigma and tau are coaxial tensors. What it means? It means that when you define sigma within a cube, you define the axis like that, axis 1, axis 2, and axis 3. With respect to that only, you define the Ei, Ej, Sigma, Ij, etc. And in case of tau, we are saying that Sigma and tau are coaxial. That means the same coordinate axis was used to define Ei, Ej and tau, Ij. And only then they can be added up or they can be subtracted if required. And what if they are non-coaxial? then the straightway addition or subtraction cannot be done. An example, sigma is defined in this case of 1, 2, 3 axis and but assume that tau is defined with a different axis system, rotated axis 1 dash, 2 dash and 3 dash. So in that case, first of all, before doing addition or subtraction, make both the tensors coaxial. So for that, one of the stresses, either sigma or tau, this coordinate axis has to be rotated to its orientation and only then I can do the addition. Once the coordinate axis are rotated, basically the corresponding tau ij will undergo some change. After the change being done, then we can go for addition. In subsequent lectures, I will be talking about the rotation of the axis, the formula straightway I will give and how the tensors can be rewritten depending on the rotation and the amount of rotation also. So once this is being done, we are moving to the next problem.